This is fan fiction only. The Story of Darth Pyrrhal by Darth Pyrrhal, TDE 136. The Great Galactic War is coming to a pause as a peace treaty is being considered. Yet on the worlds already occupied by the Sith Empire, laborers are being used to provide for their oppressors, including some taken from their homes and sent to ancient worlds to dig in caves for lost artifacts. The rusty shuttle shakes as it travels through the atmosphere. This is such an oppressive planet. The transport is just as dirty, dingy, and beat up as the whole place. Everything is dry and red, just like the rusted edges crumbling away from the shuttle. The air in the flying crate is stagnant and stale, with enough heat and humidity from the exposed engine parts to create a physically exhausting climate equal to the mentally exhausting dark cloud that has been draining all thought since arriving at this planet. After maybe a week in some cave digging for artifacts in the old red dirt, the fight with the other miner over what I found got me loaded on this shuttle, but I have no real concept of time or how long I've been here, since I cannot keep a grasp on my own thoughts for more than 30 seconds. I feel like my brain is melting, and my eyeballs are about to burst from the dryness and the heat. The shuttle lands, and I follow the other five down the ramp. Four of us are human males, while the other two are horned Zabrak. One male, one female. The single Imperial soldier I've seen recently pushes us into a line, then, as crazy as it seems, hands each of us a large bladed metal sword. When the sword handle contacts my palm, I feel a jolt go up my arm, similar to when I got into the fight in the cave. Next, a man completely cloaked in a black robe, its hood shadowing his face, approaches the line, and the soldier steps back into the shuttle. As the shuttle flies away, I notice two things that grab my attention simultaneously. The hood of the man's robe does not dislodge in the wash of the exhaust, and we are standing on top of a large stone temple. I had suspected that I'd been taken deep inside the territory of the Sith Empire. Now I am certain, as I am certain by the power I can feel emanating from this man, that it is a Sith standing before me. I am told that each of you have an ability with the Force, but does the spirit of the dark side reside within? Darkness exudes from this hooded man, as if a shadowy mist is on the verge of visibly engulfing him. Your spirit I must see, before I will allow you entrance into this temple. You will pair up, and you will fight. The war blades in your hands may be dulled from old combat, but will cause harm easily. Your death is not my objective, but it can easily be your outcome, if you are weak. His hands spread as if physically moving the pairs on the ends of the line. Now separate and fight. Three pairs of swords clash. Chinks and clangs echo up from the stone rooftop as strikes go between quick parries to brutish overhead slashes. The Zabrak male across from me is obviously a better swordsman, but I will not admit it, and I fight hard. As I swing the blade one-handed from my right, he slips back a pace. Then, as my sword passes in front of him, he raises his blade in a vertical underhand slash, cutting into my right forearm. The cut is enough for my grip to slacken, and the hilt to slip in my grasp. In that instant of surprising pain, I reach for the hilt with my left hand, but he rotates inwards, sweeping my leg with his foot while closing the distance, and I drop to one knee. With a devilish grin on his horned face, he raises his blade high in the air and with both hands pulls the sword down in a powerful strike, intent to cleave me in two. Instinctively I roll to the side and he somehow barely misses me, but it is obvious to me this arrogant man meant to kill me and the thought occurs that he was toying with me while we'd been dueling. I can see fire in his eyes, but the fire in mine burns brighter. As he swings his blade high again, I charge in. I don't grab his sword arm, I don't feel a need to as my left hand forms talons latching onto his throat and my right latches onto his left collarbone. A burning, tearing sensation rips at my fingers as our faces come an inch from colliding. The world is red except at the center of the vortex, I stare into his eyes. I do not see anything else, yet I know his body is coursing with electricity until his body flies away from me landing three meters away. As his weapon clangs against the stone, I look at the two swords laying at my feet, and I restrain myself from chasing the body. Now I am the one with the huge smile upon my face, 
and I realize my arm is barely bleeding since all of this has transpired in the matter of three or four seconds. This rage is exhilarating. As the adrenaline drains away, I begin to breathe deeply, and a sensation equal to a cool breeze blowing across my face tingles its way through my core to all my extremities. The sun is glorious in its brilliant red, illuminating this sacred landscape. The tunnel vision of before has opened to reveal a larger world before me. I can see the tops of other magnificent temples and the statues of ancient Sith Lords in the distance standing proudly over their remains. The electric tingle continues into an aching, throbbing desire persisting in my hands, my feet, and behind my eyes, a hunger, a lust that I crave for more of, this ecstasy of static discharge. Someday, a great Sith you could be. Now, get back in line. The dark man before me speaks as others help the Zabrak to his feet. What shall the Sith call you? I pause but a few seconds as a haunting voice speaks as if on the inside of my eardrum. I am Pyral Shadow. He nods once, then steps back to the center of the stone rooftop. All of you will spend the night in the common room below us. Several acolytes will prepare you, as tomorrow you will be taken to begin your training. Strength you will need, as you have many chains to break.